Hey nail tubers, today we have a special request. So how is everyone? I hope you are well and in good health. And if you're here for the first time, I'm so glad because today is a tutorial by special request from a previous video when I did my Harley Davidson nails. If you haven't checked it out, why not? Because let me tell you, that set was fire. I mean, come on, they were Harley Davidson. You know they had to be something and no, no, I'm not going to flash a pic of it either. You're just going to have to check it out. <laughs> I am giving you a slight preview here, though. So when you're done, you need to watch it, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And when you do, you will see how this video came about. I'll have a link for it at the end of this one. So there were three comments from that video. Omnia's wish. Hey, girl, asked how do I make the decals? Drea's Dream World. Hi, Drea. Asked if she could get a tutorial on it. And Burma Almendares asked to see a picture of my motorcycle. Hi, Burma. Let's start with the type of paper you'll need. It's called water slide or water slide decal paper. My first and only try at this was just before I started my channel, and the decal some of you saw in the Harley Davidson video was from that print. I used this paper which I got from Hobby Lobby by Testers, and this paper wasn't cheap. As you can see, it was $11.99, but guess what? It was only for six sheets, and guess what else? The sheets were half-sized. Can you believe it? That's the equivalent of three pages for $11.99? Hence the reason I only did this one time. This paper is not to be wasted. Either way, it's been out of stock. I wouldn't purchase it again anyway. After I got the request for the tutorial, I checked Michael's and found this brand called Spin It by We Are Memory Keepers. It was $10.99, but still for only four full sheets. The good thing about Michael's is their sales though. It ended up being buy one, get one, 50% off. So I ended up buying two packs for a little over $16, but this is still pricey to me. I ended up buying locally because I didn't think what I found online would arrive for a while. But lo and behold, the expected delivery date changed and I got it in time for me to edit this in. So this was $13.99 for 20 full sheets from Hayes Paper Company, the best price I've seen so far. It's also listed as an Amazon's choice. Pretty obvious why. So you don't have to shop around guys. I took care of it for you, okay? There'll be a link in my description box. From what I noticed, there are variations of this decal paper. What I do know is if you're doing this on a printer, especially an at-home printer, be sure that you are choosing the one that says inkjet. Now, I know it would seem you would use a photo or picture program in the computer, but what I used is Microsoft Word. The primary reason for this is because I find that resizing the image does not become distorted in the Word document like it does in any of my photo apps that I have. This might be different for you or if you are tech savvy. Remember when I said this paper is not to be wasted? There are some things to keep in mind about this when using Word. 
It opens up with set margins. These margins need to be adjusted in order to maximize the use of your paper. So, you can click on Layout at the top, then click on the Margins, and there you will see the automatic set margins, and you should widen them, which will allow you to place as many images on the print as possible. Once you've found and copied your images, you can come to your document, right-click for the drop-down box, then select Paste to place it in the document. Now, let's talk about resizing. Everything that you copy is not going to paste in your document in the small size that you want, so you will have to resize. Let's take a look at that again. Click into the image to bring up the cropping border, and you will see the bubbles at each corner. I typically go from the lower right corner towards the upper left corner to keep the image in the position where it was placed. Basically, you click and hold the corner bubble and drag it up and to the left to resize your image. I find common numbers for sizing in my nail decals to be anywhere from 0.35 to about 0.45. It will vary with the image. Just a couple of more things before you're ready to print. Unless you're very familiar with how to adjust the feed on your printer, which I don't, avoid printing a small number of images at a time, which will leave you with cutting down to smaller unused portions of the decal paper. Think of as many images as you can come up with and fully load your page. Also, if you notice, I made certain to create small spacing between the images. This will provide cutting room and keeps you from ruining the image next to it because it's a Word document and it's done as easy as hitting the spacebar. Just be sure it's at normal font size, like 12. Now we're ready to print. For this, you'll have to follow your printer's manual or guide. So I tend to run a test page. And what I do is, because <laughs> I forget how my printer goes. You know, some of them at work goes different from the ones you have at home. So I tend to run a test page so I can remember how to feed that paper. Because I ain't trying to waste none of it, right? So I just marked it to see which side it's going to print. And it's funny because my printer prints backwards from the previous one that I had. My printer, this one prints last page first to the first page, and it also prints in a different direction. I don't know how to explain it. It really doesn't matter, but I do it every time just to check. So I marked the side that I figured the print was going to come out on. I know this is like... I don't know if this is considered to be an old printer, but you know what? It works. It works for me. And so, it goes. So if you notice, it printed upside down. Maybe I'm just thinking crazy. I don't know. But yeah, that would be the last page. And then on top of it, the next one and the next one to the first page. So, okay, let's see. You may not be able to see it, but I can see the mark that I put on it. Now let me show you this too. Be mindful of which way you place the paper in. I brought it to the light. Hopefully you could see. The dry side is the back, and then you want to put it... The print side is slight. It's got a slight shine to it. Not a high shine, but a slight shine. So you're going to place it in your feed, and make sure you can tell that it touches, and... 
So now I'm going to print this. Where's my cursor? I try to see it through the camera. <laughs> and then go down to print. And then your selection will come up. I hit the print box. Then it's going to say something like, uh, you're outside of the margin area. Do you still want to print? And you're going to click yes. So we are waiting for our print to come up. And, you know, I noticed when I put it in the feed that this paper is maybe about one-tenth of a centimeter or whatever shorter than regular paper, but it's full-size paper. And so far, so good. It's looking like nothing is coming out cut off. And that's what we want. The other thing, too, is, is remember when I mentioned in the tutorial part where I said you want to make sure you leave spacing. So you see you've got spacing in between each print to uh, cut without affecting the next one. Yay! Okay, so from here, we have to protect it. We have to spray a protective coating on it. Now that your images are printed, you definitely want to preserve them. And you will do this by spraying your sheet with a layer of clear coat, some type of a clear spray paint. This will prevent the colors from bleeding when you place the decal in the water. I had some of this Krylon Crystal Clear Gloss left from when I repainted my outdoor furniture. And when I saw that it said non-yellowing, I figured give it a try with this project. And it worked very nicely. Okay guys, so my son's been over. So I kind of recruited him to come and play assistant for me. And what you want to do is, because is, we're getting ready to use the protective spray. Oh, let me show it to you. So remember, as I said, this is the Krylon Crystal Clear Gloss. And then here's where it says non-yellowing. Sorry for the appearance of the can. It's a couple of years old and it's been sitting in the garage. But hey, you know what? I ended up managing to have what I needed, right? So you're just going to, and I'm doing a cheat because I'm actually spraying this inside. But it's just for a quick thing for, for you guys. I'm doing this for you, okay? <laughs> if I could hold the, you're going to hold it away at the recommended distance, maybe about 10 inches apart. It doesn't need a whole lot. You don't want to spray it to where you have to pay attention to make sure it's not runny. You want to spray it to where it's kind of even coated. And that's it, guys. So we're going to wait for this to dry, okay? Okay, guys. So here's the finished product. Oh, look at how shiny it is in the camera. Okay. And looking at it, it looks like it was coated nice and evenly. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half because this is not how I would store it. I don't have space like that. So... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's going to be a little uneven. But that's okay because I think I'm just going to cut out one of the rows. So I'm just... Okay. And for this one, I'll just start right at the bottom. I think this time I'm going to use just for demonstration purposes, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to use these little, this little sushi guy, the little sushi and the little rice bowl. They're cute, aren't they? Move that aside. I have one nail stand and Yoko had some extra nails. I'm not even going to polish it because I'm just demoing it for you. And here's my water bowl, right? grab my tweezers and now you can see what I mean about leaving some space in between that'll allow you to cut your image without affecting what's already there and I try to cut I see I already did it but that's okay this is just for demonstration and cut any excess guys 
you want to trim away any excess because sometimes the edging will show up I have seen um, a video where somebody used a little acetone around the edges to blend it in but <clears throat> it depends on what type of polished surface that you're putting it on so I try to get as close to the edge as possible and there you go there's the sushi right and let me cut little rice guy down he's so happy he's cute so I just cut him down okay and then I'll drop him in the water and they only sit in there just for a few seconds I take them out and I test it see if they'll slide off and there that one is sliding off already guys look at that there's some sushi <laughs> there's a little sushi oh, they'll slide around while they're wet which makes it convenient for you to place them however you need Oops. and then let me take little rice guy out he's cutie and he slides right off so yeah I have been having look at this oh I might have to make some um I might have to make nails like this the little uh, Harajuku nails it's like Japanese right You can even use like your silicone tool just to smooth it out. I don't know whether or not it'll affect any of the color that's in it, but nice and gently and push the water out from underneath by pressing it and kind of sliding the silicone tool.